This week's episode is n- this week's episode is not brought to you by GoPro or Lassie, but I use those products and I like them. So this week's we're going to be talking about dialogue mixing, not specifically recording dialogue for commercial video production, but the mixing process once you get it into your NLE. This is sometimes the hardest process on the freelancer because a lot of us get into this game because we like the video, we like the visuals, we grew up using video cameras, but audio is this kind of like this mythical beast that we don't really know how to deal with. So me being an audio guy by trade before I even did video, I love talking about it. So here we go. We're jumping in. We're in Premiere Pro. If you don't use Premiere, the concepts here will apply generally to Final Cut, but I don't use Final Cut, so you're going to have to be kind of on your own for that. So we're in Premiere now, and we got everything edited. Everything visually is good to go. Even our Foley audio and music is in there and cut, and everything's perfect, but we need to mix the dialogue. So listening to it just with the dialogue right out of the recorder, this is what it might sound like. Reflecting on the fact that this might... So, so basically here, the levels are way down, and you don't know what other kind of mix problems you might have with this dialogue. So let's get the dialogue bounced out of Premiere and bring it into Adobe Audition. If you don't have Audition, you can use Logic, you can use uh, Pro Tools, you can use any other DAW to mix your audio and then bring it back into Premiere. I like Audition, and I am a Creative Cloud subscriber, but Audition's great because of the dynamic link between Premiere and Audition. It works really well together. So what you first need to do... Find out the name of your, your audio track here, your dialogue track, by clicking on it and letting it show up. So we got Zoom 1, Track 1. You can open it just to make sure that's your dialogue track. Oxygen masks, but, um, but still shaken up and startled, and, and so things start to calm down. Okay, so what we're going to do is in Premiere, you're going to right-click, go down to Edit in Adobe Audition, choose Clip, and that's going to render and replace out of Premiere into Audition while maintaining the fidelity of the audio. So the first thing you want to do is listen through your dialogue. And we were instructed to put the oxygen masks on. And I remember looking at my, my friend Chris and... Right off the bat, the first thing I would do is compression. You want to compress out your signal. No matter who you're talking to or what kind of mic you're using, compression is going to be huge for video because compression, like I've talked about in other videos, basically is just going to even out your volume. It's going to take the loud parts and on a designated threshold, pull them down a ratio that you choose so that when somebody's talking and they they get a little bit louder, then they get quieter, then they get louder, it's going to more even that out. And that's going to help them cut through the mix a lot more clean because dialogue is driving the narrative of your commercial project or your film. And you want it above the music consistently and you want it above the sound effects consistently. So we're going to use some third-party plugins here because that's what I know. So we're going to open up here a Waves compressor. So we'll go ahead and pull the threshold down to where we think we're peaking and go just under it. And I like to start with a ratio of around 4 to 1. Uh, for gentle compression on dialogue. Attack and release, you can leave where they are, and we'll worry about makeup gain later. So let's see what this sounds like at a threshold of about 25 dBFS. That I have thought of you and I'm thinking of you in this last moment. We'll go to kind of a more amplitude section here and listen to that while watching the attenuation over here on the left. This is the attenuation of how much it's pulling back. Properly. And so obviously uh, there's a sigh of relief. Uh- Okay, listen to that again without compression. Properly. And so obviously uh, there's a sigh of relief. With compression. And so obviously uh, there's a sigh of relief. So, like I said, it's holding it back a little bit, making it more consistent, help it cut through the mix. Next, let's do a EQ tool. This is going to be crucial. So let's just monitor our EQ across the spectrum, see if there's any problem spots. Uh, even as we're wearing the oxygen masks, but... Um, but st- okay, we're going to start with a low cut here. We're going to cut out anything below 100 hertz. Not going to need that. Um, and we're not going to worry about those high frequencies because we can't hear them anyway. So let's look at it now. Up, and I turn to my friend Chris, and we're talking, and, and as we're processing uh, in this moment, we're noticing that these masks that are still dangling in front of us, um, printed on the bag of the oxygen mask says Lenexa, Kansas. And it was just kind of something I noticed that, oh, this is funny that this... this ma- so when you look at the EQ spectrum here, these are kind of the average peaks. Uh, the goal here isn't to really boost the signal at problem spots. It's to find the hot signals and pull them back, um, just so you're not going to risk increasing your volume overall before you get to your limiting. So right here, I mean, this is kind of where the muddiness happens. 
I'd probably pull that down a little. Um, I'd probably pull down some of those sibilant frequencies that he's having trouble with up here, make this a little wider of a cue and listen to that. And, and it's getting pretty real. Um, and we have no idea why. I'm going to make this a little bit um, different scale so we can see what we're looking at. Uh, the plane is going down faster and faster and we have no instruction and in this moment I'm and I do like to add a little bit at the very top end this would be like a high shelf of like a half a decibel just to give it some air some presence so the next thing I would do would do a little bit of de-essing because anytime you're compressing a signal sometimes those sibilant frequencies get out of control so we're gonna go over here to our waves de-esser plugin and again, all these are going to be stock plugins in your NLE if you're doing it there. Um, these are the third party ones. So pull this threshold down, just kind of listen. Know that, that I have thought of you and I'm thinking of you in this last moment, hoping that if, if my phone got in reception and uh, in cell service, I'd be able to reach them. So I'm choosing a frequency of about 5,000. Uh, male sibilance is usually around five to 6,000 range. Um, and the threshold is just like a compressor. You're telling the tool when to engage. So at negative 40 dBFS, when you start to hear those sibilant frequencies in that range, it's going to attenuate just those uh, frequencies. Next, this is really specific to me. I've never seen anyone else do this, but I like to use kind of like a little bit of a saturation tool or a distortion tool to just add some color to the vocals. So, so let's just listen through here. And so obviously uh, there's a sigh of relief, uh, even as we're wearing the oxygen masks, but, um, but still shaken up and startled and and so things start to calm down. So once you have that, the last thing I do with vocals is limiting. And I've talked about limiting a lot on this channel, on this show, whatever you want to call it. Limiting is just the process of bringing up your dial or sorry, bringing up your levels without clipping. So we're going to pull up a limiter made by Fab Filter here. This one's really cool because you can see the waveforms over time. You can see how much you are boosting and you can see the attenuation all in real time across the screen. So just watch here and listen as we boost some of these levels. Down to 10,000 feet uh, to, to be at a place where we can breathe properly. And so obviously uh, there's a sigh of relief, uh, even as we're wearing the oxygen masks, but, um, but still shaken up and startled. And, and so things start to calm down, but, but still, still shaken up. And I turn to my friend Chris and we're talking and... And that's really good for me. I mean, I, we don't need to be peeking out at zero because I don't want it to clip the whole project once you're back in there with the music, with the sound effects and stuff like that. But if it's just peaking between zero and negative six, that's gonna be a lot better for you to sit in in the mix without trying to mess with the gain back in Premiere. So when you feel pretty good about your, your signal chain here, when you feel good about this channel strip you're putting on the audio, go ahead and apply that. Apply the effects rack um, in, in, in Audition. It'll actually bake it into the audio file so you don't have to worry about having a channel strip in Premiere. What you need to do here to get this to fit your cuts is find your original audio file up here, right click, choose replace footage, it works for audio too. Go into your directory that Audition automatically saves it, we were audio extracted three, open it, and it'll go ahead and replace that for you inside of the Premiere timeline. So now listen to his, his uh, dialogue with the music. On and notified us that we had lost cabin pressure. Uh, that everything else was functioning fine, that we just needed to drop to 10,000 feet. So right away, that sounds a lot better. The levels are boosted, that's really important. The compression has kept it from jumping out at you at different times. Um, we've even saturated his vocals a little bit and taken out some of the EQ issues. So that's basically it for mixing dialogue. It's pretty simple. Uh, as long as you understand your audio tools, uh, you should be good to go there. And if you've made it this far, like all my videos, it's hard to make it all the way to here. But if you have, you're a champion and I'm proud to know you. Hit the like button, leave a comment. I'd love to interact with you with keyboards, and I will see you next week.